If you are replacing your boiler and you are wondering whether you should replace any of the ancillary components in addition, you've come to the right place because we will answer that in this video and more. And if you're on the fence about what type of boiler to get, at the end of this video, there'll be a video link that talks about one of our favorite combi boilers on the market, the Triangle Tube Instinct, and in addition, a video that provides a head-to-head -head mashup between cast iron boilers and high efficiency boilers. So make sure you check that out at the end. So when it comes to replacing your boiler, there's a range of options available. And oftentimes customers will ask us if it's possible to just replace the boiler, but leave the other components and piping intact. Now, the obvious reason people ask this is because obviously if we are redoing a lot of piping and replacing your expansion tank and zone valves, in addition to all the trim pieces that go into a boiler system installation, this is things like an air eliminator and a pressure reducing valve. It all starts to add up substantially and adds to the price compared to a simple disconnect and reconnect of a basic boiler system. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the boiler item components we recommend replacing with every system installation. And in addition, I'm going to break down why we recommend replacing each of these individual components and the purpose that they serve. When you get a standard trim kit from the parts house for a boiler system installation, this trim kit will typically include an air eliminator, a pressure reducing valve backflow preventer combo, and an expansion tank. So let's get started with what these items are and what purpose they serve because these are the absolute basics that you must replace on every boiler install. Now, the purpose of an air eliminator is exactly what it sounds like. It eliminates air from the system while the boiler is running. An air eliminator is composed of a scrubber brush inside of a housing along with a float that allows for air passing through the system to be purged while the pump is running. Now, the reason it's so important to replace this component is because if you have air in your system, you will get annoying gurgling noises. And if the old air eliminator isn't working well, it can be bad enough that it causes air locks in certain sections of your boiler piping, which means that the boiler won't be able to heat those sections of baseboards and you won't have heat in those zones in your home. Now, a little known fact is that fresh water being pumped into your boiler system actually has dissolved air in it. This means that while your boiler pump is circulating water, if it is not removing air from the system, then that air will get trapped in your lines and you will get annoying gurgling sounds as well as an inefficient boiler. And if it's bad enough, your boiler won't even work and will have a host of other issues until the air is purged out of the system. This is one of the reasons that an air illuminator is a standard part of every trim kit and is part of every boiler system replacement. The next component that is standard in every trim kit is a pressure reducing valve backflow preventer assembly. Now your pressure reducing valve is typically set at 12 to 14 PSI cold and the purpose of this valve is to reduce the pressure going to your boiler system. Typically your boiler will run between 12 and 20 PSI depending on whether it's hot or cold and when a pressure reducing valve fails the pressure is either going to be too high or too low and essentially prevents the system from running properly. If the pressure reducing valve fails and causes the pressure to spike above 30 PSI the results can be water damage because your pressure relief valve will trip causing water to get everywhere. And if the pressure reducing valve fails and is too low, the result is that the system is not getting enough makeup water and the pump will not be able to circulate water through the system, which means you won't have heat. Now, oftentimes this will trip a low water cutoff sensor within the boiler system. And once the technician comes out and repairs the system, it will be functioning properly. And the purpose of the backflow preventer is that when the system is running, it prevents water from your boiler from back feeding into your domestic water side. When your backflow preventer fails, there is a diaphragm that opens and will also leak water. Now, keep in mind that this should typically be plumbed into your floor drain as part of code. But my point is, do you really want your brand new boiler going out every few months because you have a bunch of old janky components that you didn't want to replace when you replace the boiler? The whole point is that these components components surrounding the boiler are just as important, if not more important, than the boiler itself. And making sure that everything is functioning properly is why we replace these components. And this is especially true of the expansion tank, which is the last item in our trim kit. And I'll explain why and what its purpose is. Now, an expansion tank is essentially a diaphragm tank full of air that expands and fills with water as the system is running. Now, this is because Water expands and contracts as it heats up and cools down. And the expansion tank serves the purpose of making sure that the expanding water fills the diaphragm instead of increasing pressure on the system itself. This makes sure that your PSI stays within the normal range of 12 to typically 20 PSI when it's operating, depending on whether it's hot or cold. If your pressure gets above 30 PSI, it will also trip the pressure relief valve 
causing your boiler to leak everywhere. Now that covers the standard trim kit that is an absolute bare minimum that should be replaced on every boiler installation. But what about your zone valve, zone controllers, or boiler pump? These are all equally important and we will talk about how these components interact with the boiler system and why they should be replaced at the same time that you're installing a new system. Most systems have zone valves and you will typically have one zone valve per thermostat in the house. Now this is an example of a zone manifold and each of these zone valves controls a separate zone in your home. Zone valves serve the purpose of directing flow to a zone when a specific part of the home is calling for heat. This is one of the best features of a boiler is that you have the ability to zone your comfort so that every room or area has its own thermostat. This way, if your in-laws like it hot, but you like it cold, you can each set the thermostat accordingly and don't have to play the classic game of thermostat wars. And the reason we recommend replacing zone valves is that they typically have a 10 to 20 year lifespan. And if a zone valve fails, it can potentially prevent the boiler from kicking on. And if the end switch isn't closing, it won't come on at all. And I'll elaborate on what that means now. When your thermostat calls for heat, it powers the zone valve. And when the zone valve powers, it closes what's called an end switch inside the zone valve. When that end switch closes, it completes the 24 volt circuit, which then sends a signal to the boiler to turn on. The reason this becomes annoying is that let's say every other zone in the house is working except for the one in the master bedroom. This means that when any other zone in the house is calling for heat, it will turn on the boiler. But meanwhile, when the master bedroom is calling, it won't turn on the boiler, which means a zone valve either won't open or if the zone valve is opening, but the end switch is not closing, then it doesn't matter because the boiler won't kick on unless one of your other thermostats is calling for heat and therefore one of the other zones is calling for heat. And anytime we ever have a customer that is trying to postpone a replacement of these other components, which trust me, I understand where you're coming from, especially if things are tight and you're trying to keep costs down, all it does is lead to inevitable repairs and issues down the road later and an unnecessary amount of service calls because although you have a brand new boiler, you could have five or 10 other points of potential failure that are at the end of their life because they weren't replaced. This is why we always include zone valve replacement on a boiler estimate if they weren't obviously just replaced or repaired in the past couple of years. Like I said, zone valves typically have a 10 to 20 year lifespan. And when we put in a new system, we want to eliminate the chances of failure as much as possible, which is why we try to replace everything at the same time. Now a pump replacement is pretty standard for the same reason. And that is that if you have a perfectly working boiler, but no pump to circulate hot water through the zones, then you're not going to get heat to the zones in your home and will have an unnecessary service call. Now, sometimes you're system can require a specialty pump, especially if you have a bigger home with multiple zones or in-floor radiant heat, for example. But for the most part, the pumps are typically at the end of their life cycle when we're doing a boiler system replacement. And this is included in every one of our bids on a system replacement for that reason. Now, it's important to make sure that you're putting in the right size pump for the home. If it's a larger home, for example, because typically that pump that's in there currently is sized for the piping loop lengths and the system volume. And if you try and replace it, with a standard 007 Taco pump, for example, but it requires a specialty higher horsepower Grunfoss pump, for example, your technician will be paying you a visit in the winter when it's not keeping up. And there's one more component that is technically more of a recommendation, but it's part of all of our bids and our standard boiler install best practices. But before I tell you about that, please, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this content so far. And if you're not, you can click the dislike button too. That's fine. It's a free way you could support the channel and it helps us out substantially and please post a comment in the comment section below letting us know what you think did you find this information helpful let us know what questions you have or still have or what current project you're working on because we always love to chime in on people's specific projects so post that in the comment section below and the final component that we recommend as standard best practice is the installation of a zone controller. Now a standard Honeywell zone valve requires a 24 volt transformer and typically you can power up to three zone valves on one transformer. But for a cleaner installation and easier troubleshooting in the future, we like to install zone controllers because they have an integrated transformer or transformers inside the housing that power all of your zone valves and it serves the purpose of number one, making for a nice clean infrastructure for future system replacements. And two, it 
just looks cleaner when the installation is done. And when we install a boiler, we have the intention of redoing all our basic piping and outlining it in a way that provides for a clean and tidy appearance and in additional sets you up for success in the future so that it's easy to change out these components when they need replacement for serviceability, which keeps your service cost down in the future as well. Now I'll talk about one particular bonus component really quick that specifically applies to high efficiency systems, and that is a low loss header with a built-in air eliminator. The reason I love these is because it ensures that your T spacing between your primary and secondary loop is sized properly for your boiler, and it does an excellent job of air elimination and making sure that your system is functioning efficiently. These are definitely an added expense, but we include one of these on every single one of our boiler install bids for that reason. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button to help out with the algorithm. And as promised, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about one of our favorite high efficiency combi boilers. And in addition, a video that is a head to head mashup between cast iron boilers and a high efficiency boiler that discusses the differences and benefits between both of these types of systems. And the last thing I wanna to touch on that is another install best practice that we include on every boiler install is what's called ISO flanges for our boiler pump. Now ISO flanges, which is short for isolation flange are simply ball valves that mount directly to the boiler pump. The reason we love these is that in the future when we have to service your system this keeps your service call costs down because oftentimes we don't have to bleed and purge the system after this because the amount of air that gets into the boiler system is minimal whenever we have to perform a pump change. Boiler pumps go out every 10 years or so. They're kind of like the equivalent of a blower motor to a furnace or air handler. And sometimes they go down more often depending on the use case of the pump, which is why we love putting on these ISO flanges because they save time and money when it comes time to replace the pump in the future. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button to help out with the algorithm. And as promised, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about one of our favorite high efficiency combi boilers, the Triangle Tube Instinct. In addition, there's a video popping up that is a head to head mashup between a cast iron boiler and a high efficiency boiler that discusses the differences between these two types of systems.